It's David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about static CE2301. We had some homework problems on solving for the moment of inertia, the second moment of area, by integration. These were started with problem 84, which was a triangle, base 180, height 200. It's not a symmetric triangle, it's 80 millimeters to that point. First thing we have to do is develop a, an equation for the sloping line on either side. Sloping line on the left side is y is equal to 2.5x. Sloping line on the right side is y is equal to 360 minus 2x. Okay, whenever we have a uh, area bounded by an axis, we want to generally take a little strip element dA that's of dimensions, in this case because it's parallel, I mean it's bounded by the x-axis, it's a uh, dimension that is dx and its dimension and its height is y. So I'm going to use this equation here for the moment of inertia about an axis x of a rectangle of b width h height is bh cubed over 3 and the mom moment of inertia about the centroidal axis x prime is bh cubed over 12. So I'm going to use it here in a second here. For x equals 0 to 180 on the left, si the left side triangle, if I divide this into two parts, here's my little element. It is dx wide and it is y is equal to 2.5x tall. So the area is just the integral of that little strip over the width from 0 to 80. So area is, D, is the integral of dA, which is the integral of y dx. Substituting that value for y in there, I get the integral from 0 to 80 of 2.5x dx. I evaluate that out. It's 2.5x squared over 2 from 0 to 80 is 8,000 millimeters squared. Okay, there's two, several different ways to skin a cat here, so I want to ix the moment of inertia about the x-axis, which is here on the base. I could do, by the parallel axis theorem, which I've got over here in black, ix the moment of inertia about any axis, any line is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia plus the ad squared, the area times the distance squared from the centroid of the area to the axis that I'm taking the moment of inertia about. So I could do it that way, but it involves two integrals using this little strip, or I can just do an integral of the derivative of ix about its own base. That's where I use this formula here. ix is equal to bh cubed over 3. So dix is bh cubed over 3 because dx is the, uh, the width or the base. Uh, multiply that out, I get dx is b. y cubed is h cubed over 3. So the integral of ix is, or ix is equal to the integral of dix, which is substituting in for y, 2.5x, that term there, cubit, divided by 3 times dx. I can evaluate that or I can plug it into Wolfram Alpha or something like that and get 53.3 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. Now IY, I could also evaluate that using the parallel axis theorem. Uh, I don't have a convenient formula like I had bh cubed over 3 for that so I'm going to have to do DIY prime, moment of inertia of that strip about its own centroidal y prime axis plus uh, integral of x squared dA. Well fortunately for us, uh, if I look at this term, IY prime is b cubed h over 12 about its own centroidal axis, but in this case, b is the height 
That's that I'm going to cube. But that is dx in this little elemental strip. So that's really infinity. And so that term goes to zero. So this whole term goes to zero. D, the integral of d i y prime um, turns into goes to zero because of that. Dx is infinity. So I'm left with just the x squared dA term, which is the integral of x squared times dA from up here is 2.5x dx. So it's just the integral of 2.5x cubed dx from 0 to 80. Evaluate that. It's 25.6, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. Okay, so I've got half the problem worked. Now I need to go from x80 to x is equal to 180. So use the same little strip. It's dx by y tall. In this case, y is 360 minus 2x, this formula. So the area is the integral of dA, which is the integral of y dx, which is the integral from 80 to 180 of 360 minus 2x, substituting that in for y, dx. So I get my area is 10,000 millimeters squared of that half on the right. Similarly, Ix is equal to the integral of I dx, just like I, I did up here. It's the bh cubed over 3 term. In this case, h, the height is that y value. So I cube it, 360 minus 2x cubed, divided by 3. And b is this dx term. Evaluate that out. I'd recommend Wolfram Alpha, especially for that one, because it gets a lot of terms because of the cubed. I get 66.6, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. IY is equal to, similarly to what I did up here, integral of x squared dA, which is the integral from 80 to 180 of x squared dA, which this is the y term, which is this formula, 360 minus 2x dx. Evaluate that. It's not bad. I could do that by hand or a Wolfram Alpha. 134, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. So now I just need to sum things. My totals are the area is 8,000 plus 10,000 or 18,000 millimeters squared, which I can check using my area of a triangle one half base times height. That checks out. Ix is just the sum of these two terms, 53.3. 10 to the 6th and 66.6 .6, 10 to the 6th. That's 120 times 10 to the 6th. There is a formula for the moment of inertia of a triangle about its base, which is bh cubed over 12, which I've shown over here. So I can check it with that. 1 12th, 180 times 200 cubed is also equal to 120 10 to the 6th. Iy is just the sum of these two terms, the left half. 25.6, the right half of the triangle, 134, so I get 159.6, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. A mass for the radius of radii of gyration in the Kx, just Ix over A, 81.64 millimeters. Ky, radius of gyration, y axis is the Iy, 159.6, 10 to the 6 over 18,000, the area. 94.16 millimeters. Okay, I'm not going to solve all these, but I'm going to give you a good start on it. Problem 8.8 is this area bounded on the left by the y-axis, and it's bounded on the bottom by the line x equals 1, or y equals 1, and up here y is equal to 8. And over here I've got a curve where the formula is x cubed y is equal to 64. I can rearrange that and I can get x is equal to the cube root of 64 over y or 4y to the negative one-third power. From then on I've just got to evaluate it the same way I did up there except this time I've got a horizontal strip. Area is equal to dA which is equal to x which is the width dy is the height. Substitute in that for x. This term over here, 4y to the negative one-third. dy, I can evaluate that. That's equal to 18 millimeters squared. 
IX is equal to, in this case, the IX prime term goes to zero because of that height dy being infinity. So I'm just left with the y squared dA term, which is integral from 1 to 8 of y squared times x dy, where I've got it substituted in 4y to the negative 1 third power for x dy. Multiply, keep my term, common terms together, I get the integral of 4y to the 5 thirds dy, which is equal to 3 something something millimeters to the fourth. Plug into Wolfram Alpha or just evaluate it yourself from 1 to 8. That's not a difficult integral to evaluate by hand. Use Wolfram Alpha if you need to, but you're not going to have Wolfram Alpha on the test. IY is equal to the integral of DIY, where I've got a horizontal strip of, it's B, I'm going to use the BH cubed over 3 um, term for DIY like I did up here, except everything's rotated 90 degrees. So IY is equal to the integral of DIY, which is inter the integral from 1 to 8 of the height of my rectangle turned on its side. The height is the term for X, which is 4Y to the negative 1 third. Cube that, divide by 3 for the 1 third term up here, times DY. That's equal to 64 over third, 64 over 3, y to the negative 1 power, evaluated from 1 to 8. That's 4 something point something millimeters to the fourth. Figure that number out on your own. The polar moment of inertia is just the sum of ix and iy, so that's 4 something something millimeters to the fourth. Radius of gyrations up here, x, y, and, Z, and o are evaluated the same way. Oops, my KO is radius of gyration has been a little obliterated. It's JO over area. Okay, last but not least, we have problem 815, which is a curve that looks like this, bounded by 36. X equals 36 on the right side. And uh, at that point, Y is equal to 6. So my formula for this curve part is y squared is equal to x or y is equal to x to the is the square root of x or x to the one half power. The area is equal to the integral of dA. My strip is dx wide by y tall so it's y dx. Substitute in that value for y of x to the one half power evaluate it from 0 to 36. I get this evaluation and that works out to be 138 inches squared. Ix, I'm going to be back more like I was up here in problem 8, 4 integral. Ix is equal to the integral of dix which is one-third base cubed, base times height cubed, one-third. The height is y or x to the one-half power cubit times the base dx multiply it all out, I get the integral from 0 to 36 of 1 third x to the 3 halves power dx is equal to 1 something 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 x inches to the fourth. iy is equal to the integral of, it's just, just like this one up here, the diy prime term goes to 0 so I'm just left with the x squared dA term which is just the integral of x squared times y dA where I've substituted an x to the one-half power for y. That's equal to uh, the integral from 0 to 36 of x to the five-halves power. Easy one to evaluate by hand. You can do the math. It's equal to 8 something 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 inches to the fourth. Radius of gyration is calculated the same way over here.